In our last video, we analyzed the classification and the theology of the slapters of the shoulder. But in this video, we'll get inside our virtual operating room to take a look at how we repair surgically and arthroscopically a slapter. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stefano Teramo, and this is OrthoStrike. first thing we do in these cases is to introduce our metallic probe in order to assess the lesion. We see a slapter of type 2 in this case because we have a detaching with instability of the upper region of the labrum and insertion of the long head of biceps without a direct involvement of the long head of biceps in the tear. So what we do in this case is to first introduce our radio frequency tool and to detach the residual fibers of the lesion in order to have a totally free segment of the upper labrum and insertion of the long head of bicep on the upper pole of the glenoid cavity. We then introduce our arthroscopic scapel and we finalize our detaching of the residual fibers of the lesion. And in this way, we fully mobilize the torn aspect of the upper labrum. And we are ready to introduce our motorized tool that allows to make a scarification of the superficial cortical bone of the upper pole of the glenoid cavity. It allows us to get a mild bleeding of the cortical aspect of the bone, in which we'll have to position our guide that allows us introducing the anchor that we'll use in this case to repair our slapter. First, drill in a bone tunnel on the subchondral aspect of the anterior superior glenoid that will be able and suitable to host the all wire implant we'll position in this case. It's an all suture anchor that's able to stabilize itself by an intracortical fixation system. I can hear and offers us a double-tailed wire that will be able to recover by this retrograde device that passes through the capsule, in this case the anterior superior capsule, and under the labrum. It's a golden rule through the capsule and under the labrum. It's what we have to do to correctly catch up one of two wires of the implant. And then to be able to recover it retrogradly, to just perform correctly our arthroscopic knots that will fix the lesion. Start giving our knots in order to stabilize the anterior superior aspect of the slapter. I 
And uh, finally, we'll uh, cut both wires with uh, our metallic cutter. What we do then is to repeat the same steps a little bit norther than before, just beneath the insertion of the long head of biceps on the north pole of the glenoid. This is a real crucial aspect because we have to avoid over-constraining and over-stiffing the intraarticular portion of the tendon and we have to be very careful when we pass our suture through the anterior-superior aspect of the labrum. By our penetrating hook, we perform the same step. We go through the anterior superior aspect of the torn labrum and we recover one of the two sutures. Once we have recovered one of the two sutures, we are ready to knot our wires and to finally stabilize the anterior superior aspect of our slapter. Even though we have to be very careful, as we said, in not over constraining the intraarticular portion of the tendon of the biceps, because it may be cause of future and further painful residual symptomatology, above all in overhead elevation and external rotation for the patient. <music> Once we have stabilized the anterior superior aspect of the lesion, we perform as neither portal on the lateral aspect of the joint. We introduce our needle through the anterior portion of the supraspinatus tendon, and then we prepare a little portal through which we'll pass a cannula. This is called sneeder portal due to the surgeon, the American surgeon that described it first. Then we collocate our plastic cannula And through these, we'll pass again our metallic guide that has variable angle depending from the incidence of our portal. And in this case, is an easier and better incidence angle to approach the posterior superior aspect of the slapter and to collocate our guide just on the chondrolabral union of the posterior superior upper pole of the glenoid to produce our subchondral bony tunnel and to put inside again our third all suture anchor with a couple of wires. One of them will be recovered by another retrograde electroscopic tool, in this case a penetrator with 45 of incidence. That's helping us a little bit with the sutures will let us be able to recover one of them and to pass it retrogradly through the torn posterior superior labrum of our slapter. Once we've passed it, we finally perform our nuts 
In this case, we can see it clearly. I will make a five knot structure with the, the first two knots that are the working ones, and then a third knot that the security knot. We can add a fourth or fifth knot to be sure of avoiding a loosening of the knots during the post-op period. And finally, to introduce our cutter and to complete our knot by cutting both ends of the wires. This is it. We finally introduce our metallic probe to assess the final result. And it's a good result. We're happy with it because we have a very good anatomical reproduction of the insertion of the biceps anchor on the upper pole of the glenoid and a very stable labrum, both on the anterior and the posterior portions of the slapped. Uh, at the same time, with not an overcoat straining over an entrapment of the intraarticular portion of the biceps tendon, we are able to retract our cannula. And to finally introduce the last time our radio frequency tool in order to regularize and make a cauterization of the residual fibers of the third, as well as finally make a radio frequency coagulation of a hyperemic synovial membrane that we often see in uh, uh, chronic inflammatory disease affected athletes, such as throwing athletes with a chronic slap tear. This is all about this topic. I thank you very much for your attention and I give you appointment to our next video on Strike. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Some people fly so far with you